IoT for paper three video solutions. So question number one. The table below shows the probability of Thomas obtaining yellow, white, and green with one spin of the spinner. Complete the table. There are a number of different ways of doing this. Although this diagram is not drawn to scale, what we can say is that blue and green must make up 0.5 half of the probability. We also know that the total probability of the five must be one. And again, by splitting this into halves in different sections, we know that red, yellow, and white together must add up to 0.5. We can also say that red and green must be exactly the same because those two segments are the same size. So using that, we know that red must be 0.18. And using that blue plus green must make 0.5, we can say that blue must be 0.32. Find the probability of obtaining either white or green. So white or green means the probability of white, which is 0.12, or which is represented by and, or green, which is 0.18 we find that the probability is 0.3. Question number two, scatter graphs. Write down the height and weight of the heaviest of the 20 members of the sports club. Well, weight is across the bottom, so the heaviest person is this individual here, and their weight is 90 kilograms, and to find their height, we're going to use a ruler, and we're going to read across, and that is 172 centimetres. Write down the type of correlation shown by the scatter diagram. All the points are going from the bottom left to the top right, so that represents a positive correlation within a scatter graph. Draw by eye a line of best fit on the scatter diagram. So by eye just means we don't find the mean, so we need to get roughly half the points above the line and half the points below the line. It is not necessary that the line of best fit goes through the origin. It can stop wherever you feel necessary. Estimate the weight of a person of height 155 centimetres. So using our line of best fit, we're going to draw a line across at 155 centimetres. And we are going to work out the weight that that person would have. From the graph, we can see that that is 65 kilograms. Is it possible to estimate the weight of a person with a height of 210 from the scattered death diagram? You must give a reason for your answer. Well, the answer is no, and the reason why is because the data we have only goes up to 180. There is no information about what would happen at 210. We can't assume that this correlation continues further than the data we have. Question number three. Find the size of each of the angles marked A, B, and C. Soon as you see these arrowheads put on, you need to be thinking that these are going to be alternate corresponding allied angles, F, Zs, and Cs. In any of these questions, what I suggest you do is ignore the letters you're looking for and just fill in any information you can, and then you will come across the answers as you need them. Those two angles must be the same because they are vertically opposite each other. These two angles must add up to 180 because they're on a straight line. Again, we must know then from that 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 one is going to be 110 as well. Start using the F, Z, and Cs wherever we can. These two lines are parallel, so we have a C angle here. That leads us to 110 degrees by there. Again, we can see that there's another C angle here, which will lead to A being 70, as the C angles add up to 180. So we know that A is 70. And don't worry about filling in the diagram as you go along. The more information you've got on there, the easier the questions become. Again, either a C in that direction or in that direction will lead us to this angle here being 110. The fact that these are vertically opposite means they are the same, giving us B is 110 degrees. Again, it, just because this is parallel lines it doesn't mean they're the only two rules you can use. Here we have an F angle, which tells us that 70 degrees is the same as this angle in here, 70 degrees. Again, we could have used a C angle here for that. We can find this angle to be 110 by using the fact that these are on a straight line, and a C angle there will tell us that C is 110, or 70 even, sorry. Or we could have gone again for another F angle telling us this 70 and that one must be the same. So C is 70 degrees. Calculate the size of the interior angles of a regular 10-sided polygon. You need to remember the formula N minus 2 times by 180 divided by N. The top line of this, the N stands for the number of sides and this top line tells you what the total of all angles inside any polygon add up to. If we have a regular polygon, by divided by how many sides there are, we will find out what each angle is worth. So this becomes 10, take away 2, 
times by 180 divided by 10. So this is 8 times 180, which is 1440, divided by 10, which is 144 degrees for each interior angle. Part C, bearings. Write down the bearing of point B from point A. So to make my life easier, I'm going to draw a line from point A to point B, and I'm going to extend it a bit further just to make sure that my protractor will be easy to read. Now, I need to go clockwise to find the bearing, so I can't measure up all the way around there with the 180 degree protractor, so I'm going to measure this way instead, which gives me the angle 35 degrees. However, I need to do this angle, not that one in there, all the way around would be 360, so I'm going to do 360, take away that 35, which will give me an answer of 325 degrees. You are allowed a tolerance of 2 degrees on bearings, but make sure you are accurate as possible. Part II, a point D is to be plotted on the birth plan. The bearing of D from C is 38, and from, D is, from A is 305. So from C, the bearing is 38. So I'm going to work around to 38, mark it, and I'm going to draw a line through that point. Again, I'm going to extend it a bit further because it doesn't matter. From A, it is 305. Again, I'm going to use the fact that to find where I'm going to draw that, I'm going to do 360 minus 305, which gives me 55 degrees, and I'm going to draw the angle in reverse. So 55 degrees from here, and I'm going to, again, extend that line. Now, the only place where D can be is where these two lines meet because at that exact point I am both on both the bearings we've just drawn. Question 4a. Reflect the triangle in the line x equals minus 1. This line here is the line x equals minus 1 because every single point on that line has an x value of minus 1. Now to reflect I'm going to count how many squares from each of these points I need to go to get to the line, and then I'm just going to go again the same distance away. So it's 1, 2, 3, and then 1, 2, 3, so that becomes that corner. This point is 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and then this point here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so it becomes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and that gives me the location of my new triangle. And then I'm simply going to join up those three points to create the reflected shape. Part B, translate the triangle shown 4 to the left and 2 down. So again, each point has to go 1, 2, 3, 4 and 2 down. 1, 2, 3, 4 and 2 down. 1, 2, 3, 4 and 2 down. And again, I've now got the new location of my shape. This triangle will be facing the same way as the original as it hasn't been rotated or reflected. It has simply been shifted around on the grid. Part C, enlarge the triangle using centre zero, 0, by a scale factor of a half. So all my enlargements have to take place from the point zero, 0, Because I have a scale factor of a half, that means this shape is actually going to get smaller and closer to the centre. Instead of multiplying the distances by the scale factor, again, I'm going to multiply it by a half, which means I'm going to divide by 2. So currently, to get to this corner here, I have to go across 10 and up 4. If I multiply each of them by a half, means I'm going to go across 5 and up 2, and that is where that will become. This point here, again, at the moment I'm going across 8 and up 8, so I'm going to go across 4 and up 4, which will give me that point there. And then this one here, at the moment it's across 10 and up 8, so that becomes across 5 and up 4, and that will be there, again, producing my new shape. And as it has been an enlargement by a half, the new triangle is going to be smaller, and all lines will be half the size of the originals. Part D, loci. So I need to satisfy both conditions below. All points in the region are nearer to AC than to AB. So I need to be nearer to AC than to AB. So nearer to this line than that line. And from tracing that, you can see that that is an angle I'm producing here, angle A. I need to bisect angle A. So I'm going to set my pair of compasses to any size. And I'm going to put a little mark on each of those two lines we were just talking about. And then from each of those two lines, I'm going to do another arc. And these two arcs will intersect. Where those two arcs intersect, I'm going to take the ruler. And I am going to join up point A, the angle we are bisecting, with those intersecting lines. 
and now I know that all points that side of the line will be nearer to AC. The second thing says all points in the region are less than five centimeters from A. So I'm going to take my pair of compasses and I'm going to set them to five centimeters. And then I am going to put my compass on the point A and I am going to draw what would be a full circle, but as I'm only worried about inside the triangle, that will do. I need to be less than five centimeters, which means I need to be in that section. So this is the only part which satisfies both conditions.